the proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to Mark. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the Gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the Gospel. As he passed by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting their nets into the sea. They were fishermen. Jesus said to them, Come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. Then they abandoned their nets and followed him. He walked along a little farther and saw James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They too were in a boat mending their nets. Then he called them. So they left their father Zebedee in the boat, along with the hired men, and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Our Gospel for this Sunday comes from the first chapter of St. Mark. It is actually the beginning of the ministry of Jesus Christ. And uh, this is a wonderful Gospel to, in a way, bring together the reflections that we have been giving on the first two readings, time and conversion. That was the central message of Jesus in His ministry. He started His proclamation by saying that this is the time of fulfillment. Wow! Instead of going to uh, at once to His message, or the core message, He premises it with a view of time. This is the time of fulfillment. This is the time that we, as Israelites, have been uh, praying for the time that we have been looking forward to, the time of fulfillment. And for them, the time of fulfillment means that the kingdom of God, the reign of God, is here. That's why Jesus says immediately, the reign of God is at hand. Time according to Jesus, is not just chronology. We are used to thinking of time chronologically. So when we ask, what time is it? We do not say, oh, it is the time of fulfillment. <laughs> Your friend will turn his back on you. When people ask you, what time is it? They want the time huh, registered on your clock. It's 9 o'clock. It's 12 o'clock. That's the time that we are used to. But for the world of the Jews, and even for us, time has a quality. Time can be empty. Time can be full. And Jesus is telling them, time, history, our journey as a people and as human beings, as a humanity and as a creation, this time is nearing fulfillment. Why? Because God is near. God is here. God will rule. This is time. Now, when that is the time, you don't take it lightly. I myself, if I know I have a conference at 8 o'clock in the morning, by 7 o'clock I already feel a bit uh, queasy and nervous, you know the time is near and you start psyching up yourself so that you could present a good conference at 8 o'clock. Now, imagine if it is the time of fulfillment. The reign of God is at hand. What is the proper response? Jesus gives us that. He tells us, because the time of fulfillment is here, we should reform our lives and believe in the good news. The same message of conversion that Jonah in the first reading preached to the Ninevites. The same call to conversion, a readjustment of life that St. Paul talked about to the Corinthians in the second reading. But Jesus in his message pinpoints the two dimensions of conversion. First, reform of life. He is telling us to review our lives. Whatever, whatever is not in harmony with the reign of God 
should be abandoned. Huh? Whatever, whatever disrupts the fullness of time, which is associated with the fullness of God's rule, whatever we discover in ourselves as inimical to that fullness of time, we should let go of it. Reform your lives. Turn to God. And that is the more positive side. Believe in the gospel. Believe in the good news that Jesus will preach to you. So it is not just a letting go. It is also a clinging in faith to the gospel. That is conversion. The very person of Christ brings the fullness of time and he brings the gospel with its message of conversion. My dear brothers and sisters, as St. Paul says, time is short. But Jesus says, not that time is short, but time is now to be fulfilled. Let us not disrupt the fulfillment of time by going against God. Let us submit ourselves to the gospel so that we could lead lives in harmony with God's will and not in harmony with the destruction of God's will. Now, this message of Jesus is followed immediately by the calling of the first four disciples in Galilee, Simon and his brother Andrew, who were casting their nets. They were fishermen. And James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were in their boats, mending their nets, they were also fishermen. The time of fulfillment has come. The time of calling. The time when Jesus passes by. The time when the bearer of the reign of God comes. The time when the proclaimer of the gospel passes by. That is the time of fulfillment for Simon, for Andrew, for James, and John. Now the drama is here. What will these four persons do when the fullness of time comes to them? Will they ignore it? Will they say, come back tomorrow? <laughs> or will they say, come back next year? No, I have time. Or will they say, this is the time? Time is short. Whenever time is fulfilled, it feels so short too. You need to grab it. Thanks be to God. Simon and Andrew heeded the call. They followed Jesus. They will become fishers of human beings. The same with James and John. They left their father. They left their nets and followed Jesus. Time with the calling, and they experienced conversion. They experienced a redimensioning of their lives. It's not anymore fishing for fish, but fishing for human beings. And they will be now co-workers of Jesus bearing the same message, calling on people to heed the time. This is the time. So conversion, mission, adherence to Jesus, the kairos, the time, they all blend together. So my dear brothers and sisters, what time is it? <laughs> Don't tell me the time that is to be found on your watches. I hope Every moment when people ask us, what time is it, we will be able to say, it is the time of fulfillment. Because Jesus is here in our midst. Jesus addresses us. Jesus calls us. And when He calls, there is conversion. There is a review of life. What is against God's rule, God's reign, I abandon. And I reconfigure my life such that from being a fisherman, I become a missioner. And my message is not anymore, oh, I caught this many pieces of fish. 
Now my message is, the reign of God is at hand. But it comes with the fullness of time. You know, in my life as a priest, I have encountered so many people who ask that question, Is this the time, Father? Is this the time to get married? Is this the time to enter the seminary? Is this the time to go abroad? Is this the time to find a new employment? Is this the time to enter the, uh, the religious life, etc.? It's always time. And you know, I find it difficult to answer that. Once I was directing a young woman. Well, not so young after all. You know, she is a career woman. You know, but I could see her anguish. She was already a manager of a bank. And, you know, at a time when people are looking for employment, being a manager of a bank you know, is, a, is no mean feat. You grab it and you, you stay long for as long as you could. You know? But then, the time of fulfillment came. Somehow, through events and through persons, Jesus, the bearer of the good news, the bearer of the reign of God, came to her. And she knew it. She knew her time is now changing. And she was afraid because with that change in time, even her life would change. It was clear to her. She came to me, I think, not to ask for advice, but to ask for confirmation. And her question was, Father, you think this is the time for me to say goodbye and to enter the convent? I smiled at her and said, If it is Jesus' time, it is your time. Now she is a missionary working in one country here in Asia. How about you, my brothers and sisters? What time is it? Whose time is it? Is it your time now to respond to Jesus? The word has been exposed. Let us now fulfill it.